Hi guys, welcome to episode 7 of Roll with the Fox, the uh, special daily antivirus edition. I gotta admit, we were a little nervous about this latest stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I told Enrique, if you start to lose one of the lines, well, we had to use lines because we couldn't find both. So, anyways, uh, don't, don't move forward. So, guys, interactive. Ask questions right away. Start talking. Uh, we look forward to all the questions. I may not be able to answer all of them, but I am reading all of them, guys. So, and, and as long as we can kind of try to make it relevant or if people... Um, pile on. That's the questions I'm going to answer the most. Um, I'm going to put out a video later, later on today, like uh, we're going to have people post their questions and under the video and whichever questions get the most likes, that's the questions we're going to address. Um, so let's get right to it. Uh, this is an instructional. So uh, one of the things I think it was from uh, Adolfo Ferranda from uh, San Francisco. Uh, was when he's in close guard, um, it's a dog fight to get overhook or underhook. So that's a very good question, and I, and I think it's a good start with uh, uh, for the for the episode. So what he's talking about, I believe, is when he's in close guard. You know, he's talking about. Let's 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 turn around so people can see. So he's first of all, any time. I have the guy's hands on the torso. I need to get them off my torso. All right? Nobody, it's easy. We worked, uh, I forget which episode, might have been two, um, where, so I have an overhook. So I don't, I, on an overhook, I don't go too deep because anytime you go for this, the guy will just try to st strip the overhook right away. They know that something is happening. Or underhook. Now, you know, if you, anytime you get an underhook, you could potentially threaten his back. The problem is, it's a long way, if you sort of flat underneath him, especially in a closed guard, it's a long way to start to hunt for somebody's back. You're gonna probably get thwarted right away. The good news is, a lot of times when you start to get the underhook, we can get sort of the, the bolt cutter grip and start to work with a guitar. Okay? So, I don't necessarily care if I get an overhook or an underhook. My biggest worry is to try to first get the hands off him, or at least one, and then, right now I have an overhook. The most important thing is to get my feet on the hips. Once I have this, guys, so right now I have an, uh, I have an overhook, and I start with clamp guard with a short arm lock threat. I have triangles. Uh, I have omoplatas, if he turns hard, we can go into omoplata territory, and that's done. Tough. Right? So, anytime when I'm in close guard, what I try to do is break his, first of all, get his hands off my torso. So when I put somebody in close guard, I don't try to just close like this. Right? As we're fighting for position, I'm trying to close, now am I closing? But any time you start with a closed guard, almost by definition, you will be directly underneath your training partner and square up to him. So if I can't, I will try to just go straight into clamp guard. But it doesn't, I don't really care whether it's underhook or overhook, all right? If I'm here and I get an underhook, I'm gonna still work to get the clamp guard going you know, and when it gets hot, it finishes. Tap. All right? If I, if I get an overhook, same thing. Now this time, I'm gonna start with short arm lock, and depending, tap. If, if my training partner or opponent reads it correctly, which he, he's gonna start to turn his arm and turn his body away, in which case, I'm going into tap. Of 
Yes, we're getting fancy, guys, right off the bat. So, to answer the question, I'm more worried about stretching him out and misaligning him than getting an underhook overhook. Because I can work with either one and put him at a lot of, uh, at a very significant threat with either one as long as I can stretch him out and break his posture and, uh, and misalign. We have questions already? Yeah, so on Facebook, David Feiner asked, what is your tactic for when strong guys just clamp down in whatever position they are in? Guard, bottom of, bottom of mount, etc. No movement for openings. Oh, nice. Hi, David. Greetings to Canada. Um, what we're going to do is, is, that's a very good question. Um, my game, and, and guys, I, you know, one of the things, one of the messages that I tried to convey to you is there is a lot of content, especially now, the jiu-jitsu community is coming together, offering a lot of stuff for free, so there's a lot of free content. You can watch literally videos for eight hours a day uh, and, and not pay a dime, but also don't forget some of these guys derive their income from, from, uh, from videos, uh, you know. So support some of, some of your favorite, uh, some of your uh, favorite instructors. Um, one of the things, and I try to encourage you to try to look to the people whose style of jiu-jitsu is the closest to yours. You know, because, you know, initially when you first start out Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you can absorb everything, you focus on the basics, fundamentals, which should be fairly similar across the board. But once you sort of start to get a little more advanced, there's gonna be different styles of game. My personal style, I call it fluid BJJ. Again, it's a, it's a sort of a play on words, because I do like to play a, a train solo in the water, which I can't do right now because my gym is closed and pool is closed. So, <laughs> so this, uh, you guys are stuck with me for the foreseeable future. Um, but I also attack and create movement in order to create opportunities, because I believe my game, I try to play my game more as a human chess. I don't try to force things, I try to create openings and opportunities through movement. But it has to be sort of carefully crafted and honed and so forth. And that's one of the reasons why we're doing this. So when, I'm, when I have a guy hunkering down, so you, you know, jiu-jitsu is not intuitive, but it is very logical. So you have to evaluate quickly where is the holdup. So let's, you know, Rick is my guard that holds, holds tight. So right now, I can't move left to right, right? But I can, I can move up. That's only gonna do so much for me, all right? So I need to create movement, and then at some point, I need to start to move left to right, all right? But I first, I, anytime I feel this, guys, don't let, especially if you're dealing with a stronger opponent, they wanna slow things down, you wanna open things up, all right? So I pop up, frame and I start to create movement. Enrique tries to shut it down, but it's very difficult. I switch to the other side. Now I have movement, guys. All right? So first, figure out where is the holdup? Where is sort of the single biggest problem? Address that first, but don't just pop up. Ooh, I popped him up. And then come back down and he clamps down again. As soon as you have a little uh, freedom to move, move. Clamping down, so I'm gonna pop up and I'm moving. I'm moving. Right now, I'm already putting him in danger. Already? Shit. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's 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 uh, give another look. Can you give another look there? So as so again, the, the single biggest problem is, is here. So I'll pop up. Frame. I'm already moving side to side. He's, you know, uh, so as soon as I create an opening, I move. One of the things, and this is actually, I see this a lot in MMA, where the top guy doesn't have as sophisticated a jiu-jitsu game as the bottom guy. And the bottom guy attacks from the bottom, but they attack one specific 
technique, one specific submission, for example, arm lock, triangle. I literally, when I see one of my guys be in that position, I'm literally screaming side to side. So what I'm trying to say is, you will not necessarily create the opportunity with the first movement. It might be the second movement. On, on the last sequence that I just went, did with Enrique, I wanted to go on my left side, but the, he started to defend, he started to turn a little bit. I switched to, the, to, to my right side to his left side. So you have to be prepared. Same thing for escaping. If you bottom cross side, how many times you just create a frame, bump up, and put the guy in guard? It doesn't happen. The guy changes his hands, now you have to adjust. So try to sequence, try to string things together. Attack or defend in combinations. That is the most valuable way or, or, or the most effective way for you to, to, uh, to deal with somebody that's either stronger or also reasonably, uh, reasonably technical. Let's look at it one, one time again. Guys, notice that I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna attack side to side until I create an opening. Once that opening is there, I run with it. Okay. All the openings there. It happened right away. <laughs> so you know I prefer to attack on that side. Yeah. So defend that side. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So he's holding me tight. I pop up. I'm attacking this side. I have to switch to the uh, to this side. Now he's taking. Oh, the opening's still there. This is done, guys. This is this is done. Usually, when I get here with my students, basically I, I, I let them struggle struggle for a little bit. But this is done. Between the choke and sort of attack on the arm, this is done. Let's look at one more scenario, and this is. Actually, when you're in, a, in, a, in competition and you've got a guy that's got good takedowns, good, good game positioning-wise, but it, 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 he may not have a sophisticated submission game. And a lot of times what they try to do is just play patty cake, sort of keep, keep good, good posture, hands on your torso. So as soon as I try to get something going, it just, you know, one of these. Guys, when that happens, good old fashioned hip heist. It doesn't matter. If I get it going, that's, this is great. You know, every once in a while you'll get it on a high level guy. All right? I didn't get it on Enrique, but I already have Kimura group. Okay? So, again, keeps his elbow in, you know, playing patty kick. Hip heist. I have here to do it. So what I'm trying to do is create motion. Create motion to create opportunities. Once the opening happens, once the opportunity is there, I go with I run with it, and as you can tell guys, all roads lead to submissions. What do we got, Mike? On Facebook, Damon Will says, good morning from Italy. Hi. On YouTube, Redman says, yo, Silver Fox, love from Liverpool, brother. Liverpool, nice. And on Instagram, K Porter asked, how do you prevent someone from passing open guard? How do I prevent somebody uh, from passing open guard? That's an excellent question. Um, the reality of that is, uh, guys, there's two, two uh, schools of, of, of thought on this issue. Um, one is I close my guard and hold you as tight as possibly I can and basically wait for you to stand up, make a mistake. My personal philosophy, and I, I, that's probably sort of the more conventional thinking, especially in tournaments. Usually, if, if you got two guys locked up in a guard, usually the referee will work, warn the top guy, hey, come on, you got to move. Uh, the reality is, uh, you know, I always take back, back everything to self-defense or MMA. If I'm on the bottom and the guy's on top, the onus is on me. I have to create something because I'm the one that's, who's vulnerable. 
So a lot of times I will take risks. All right? And that is one of the re reasons why my bottom cross side defenses are very good because <laughs> sometimes my guard gets passed. I will let somebody pass my guard. Not like I don't bait them, but I will fight them until if I can't create an opportunity. Um, and if I fail, my guard gets passed, but I usually can recover very quickly. So if you're going to play a more aggressive, more submission-oriented guard, I strongly encourage you to also work your defenses from bottom of cross side. Uh, there is a pretty big video Firas Zahabi and I did. Uh, this is probably one of the first, second, or third. It, I think it's approaching probably close to 400,000 views on YouTube. It's on TriStar Gym channel. And that, I think we go probably 15 minutes over bottom of cross side defenses. I'm, I'm very comfortable being on the bottom of cross side. You know, in a, in a tournament scenario, he just scored points, but in a, in a self-defense scenario or a MMA scenario, I don't, believe it or not, I'd rather have him top cross side because I can put him back in the guard the minute he tries to strike me and hopefully create some opportunities in that movement than in my guard. Because if you have a guy in your guard that postures up well in MMA and has good base, he's going to start teeing off. All right, so let's look at just... just all right, Enrique, work your striking. Work your striking magic. I would stand up. If I was in your show, oh, it's like that now, is it? So, guys, it's, there's going to be a lot of power coming down. Now, I have had an e-bar. Enrique rips out of it. Just so you know, I'm letting it go, guys. And winds up on the cross side. So now... If he's trying to strike me, I have, you know, like right now, I feel comfortable. I, you know, worst case scenario, I just constantly move. And at some point, I will create opportunities. If this, if this doesn't work, Enrique makes his arm out. Yes. All right. So, we're going to do, Enrique is really good passing my guard. You know, he's got long arms, long legs. Um. I'm going to try to let him, well, not let him, kind of let him. <laughs> Pass my guard, and I, you're going to see how I'm going to deal with it. Uh, one thing that I want to emphasize is when you play a more aggressive, more attacking guard, uh, you need to sort of start to see when your guard is about to get passed and start to prepare as he's coming down before he solidifies. I do not stop moving. So I'm already, at, once I realize my guard is, get, is, is getting passed, I don't try to say, you know, like, so let's do this. Come on. Come on. Ah, shit. Guys, you just gave him a chance to solidify his, his yeah, now you're gonna, you have a big hole to get out. Now I'm gonna tr we're gonna try to do like some out. He got through my guard, right? He did get through my guard. It was temporary. So that's what I'm talking about. Is is when you uh, when you uh, play a more aggressive guard. Uh, especially when you start out, it will probably result in you having your guard pass more often. But in my mind, objective of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is not to not let have my guard pass, but rather make a submission on him. To me, that's my objective. So I will try to go, and, and, and I guys, uh, again, in the Hendo Gracie tribe, you, you notice that a lot of the High level guys eventually migrate to MMA. I think it's sort of built into almost the DNA of the tribe that, you know, we've always been, we've always been uh, sort of conscious of possible strikes. Uh, when I first started out a long, long time ago, uh, the bottom guy got a headgear and the top guy got, you know, made back, back then they used to call them volatudo gloves. And it used to be like this. And the guys on the bottom of his head, you learn how to tie the guy up quickly, 
and try to make something happen. Because if you tie him up and you can't either hold on to him or you can't dispatch him, guess what? As soon as he frees himself, you're going back to having your head bounced on the mat like a basketball. Okay? So that's sort of the philosophy. Um, I personally like this better. He and I train all, all the time, and he will pass my guard. But as soon as he pass, like as soon as he's passing, he's you know, uh, of course he's looking to make a submission, and I'm looking to escape. I'm looking not just to escape, but put him in a bad position, and now go after him. So let's look at one more, one more, of that where again you know, guys again please you know your guard gets passed, he drops it. Don't just kind of will to say, oh, man, this sucks. No. The guys, this, from you accepting this, the only time I will ever accept this is like, man, I'm gas. I need a few seconds to breathe. That's the only time I will literally accept it. Otherwise, especially, don't try to do it in transition because that's, so I'm fighting, I'm recovering, I'm trying to tie him up. I'm already going in. What are you going to do? You're going to try to sit up. Yeah, it's okay. So, there is a dramatic difference between you trying to fight the guard pass and as soon as you feel like this is happening, preparing for the next step before he settles down, before he solidifies his control. All right, Mike, what do we got? So on Facebook, Richard Allen says, hello from California. Thank you for producing this series, Professor. Guys, it's my pleasure. I really, honestly, I feel honored and privileged to be able to sort of, uh, we literally have people from India, from Australia, from Italy, from Czech, from Germany, from Sweden, from US, from Canada, Costa Rica, literally around the globe. And I, I'm, I'm really truly honored that we can bring a little bit of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and a little bit of joy into you. Into your devices. And on Instagram. And hopefully into your oh. minds from, your, from, from the devices. And on Instagram, Laura Lai says, good morning from Germany. Love your antiviral seminars. I miss training so much. Guys, it will come back. We will come back. It's just a matter of time. Try to watch, learn visually. If you have, if you quarantine with somebody or with uh, that trains, um, you know, you have, you have a training partner. If you don't try to do solo drills, John Danaher put out solo drills DVD that he made available for free. So I would, you know, if, you're, if I was in your shoes, guys, try to download it. And even if you don't feel like drilling yourself, just visually absorbing works. Trust me on this. And on YouTube, uh, Tamim Popel asked, uh, hi coach from Texas, what signs do you look for when deciding whether to sweep or attack from close guard? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. That is a great question. So when I close my guard, I don't, uh, I look to move right away. So I look for two things. I, I generally look for, we, we just talked about it, either the split guard with an overhook or an underhook. The other one is if, if I can, if he's, if, if he's not letting me stretch him out, then I'm going to look to go perpendicular on. So in either case, what I'm looking to do is create misalignment. Hopefully break his posture. If I'm looking for a closed guard, I'm looking for misalignment first, break and posture second. If I'm looking for split guard, I'm looking for uh, break and posture first, mis misalignment second. And it, it's, it's like literally very close. It's almost simultaneous. But that's what I'm looking for. Um, I basically attack. Usually people, you know, especially high, higher level guys, they're very hip to getting sweat right away. I will attack, I will threaten a submission usually first. Now, should the submission fail, I'll, I'm going with a sweep. Uh, one of the things uh, that I get, I usually like to do is, is um, let's look at a couple of scenarios from split goal. So, so I'm looking to break posture and misalign. I've already he's misaligned. Alright? So now what I'm looking to do is if I can attack. Alright, Enrique, he's been here many times. 
He knows this is danger. This is submission. So he cannot go to his right, to my left. He has to go to his left. So he's, if I can turn this angle, he knows he, he's giving me all five. Now, normally I would try to pop, pop up a little quicker, but go ahead. He's going to roll. So I try to monitor his roll. I actually have a split second longer, so go. I'm looking for the sweep. And say hello to my little friend. So in this case, I attack with a submission threat first, and he had to react to it. Another one is, again, from here. So this time, we're a little bit, okay. I attack putting a tonic. This is a good, good threat, but Enrique knows that he can escape by rolling. So I'm getting a sweep. Uh, as well as follow-up submission. That's the best kind, guys. <laughs> if he could sweep and go straight into submission mode. So again, I don't know if you, in the last two little sequences, I'm basically looking to see what I attack in a technical and precise manner. Hopefully my Kanye is good too. Um, if he deals with the initial threat, I will and he takes it away from me. He's giving me something else on a platter. I'm going after that secondary thing. And as soon as I sweep, as soon as I get on top, I'm going into submission mode. I'm not giving him a chance to recover momentum or recover his wits. He's on the run. When somebody's on the run, they're not threatening you. They're not, they're not passing your guard. They're not punching your face. They're running. So I'm gonna go and tackle them and then I put them, I make a submission. Uh, does that answer your question? What else we got? We only have five minutes, guys, so ask questions. Guys, don't forget, you can ask questions. I will read all of them in the afternoon, and I will try to make some topics for tomorrow. Guys, people keep asking me. I said, this is every day. Monday to Friday is Saturday and Sunday a day. Yes, it is. Every day means seven days a week. I'm committed to this, guys, so unless I break, Hopefully I won't knock on wood. I'm doing this seven days a week. So tomorrow, Saturday, the day after Sunday, we're open. On uh, Facebook, uh, Praswal Gurong asked, uh, could you please show your one-handed guillotine from top? I have been successful in sweeping and getting on top from the guillotine attempt and end up in the side control, but can't finish it. Ooh, that's a great question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, guys, this is a very good question. It's a little higher level because um, when you have somebody that defends guillotines well, and uh, most people that train with me, including him, know how to good guillotines can be shot. They know right away where it's going. So, so I, I wind up chasing him. I have found that the one-handed guillotine is a very good weapon, especially because it allows my second hand to control him flat on the back, him. So even if I were to lose the guillotine, I can't submit him. I'm in a very strong position to hit him with some secondary submissions. But there is a very specific way that I finish versus the conventional way. If you look at people doing a one-handed guillotine from top and cross side, typically, you know what, let's do this. Let's do it from, from the knees. So I hit a guillotine. He rolls, all right? Now, he tries to block me from coming up. When, that, when I see that happening, I'm going to try to, I have to arch because I have to clear his head. So I have to arch and I start to adjust my hand. All right? So my hand starts to adjust from being shallow to going deeper and flat. Also, this underhook is critical, not at the shoulder. This is a scramble, guys. This is control. Scramble, control. So as I'm coming up, and now this is how most guys finish. They pull. This sucks for Enrique, but that doesn't put him out. So I compress. The reason I know this, I had a very high level black belt catch me in this once, and like he literally tried to rip my head off. And look at this neck. I didn't tap. 
I have shallow karate, so I always tell my students, good luck getting to them, but if you do, it might be over quick. So I have shallow karate, not the strongest neck in the world. So what I realized that when, it, when I got caught in it, was, if I'm not tapping, nobody else will, especially Mike, the guy sitting behind the trio of devices, uh, doing a good job filming. Um, he will not tap. So I need to make sure that I have a constriction. It, again, mostly guillotines, uh, uh, submissions should be constriction, not ripping the guy's head off. So let's look at it again, slightly different angle. So I'm going to figure the flops. So I realize I'm not getting the guillotine. So I'm going to arch, flatten my hand, and get it deeper. As I'm coming up on top, rather than pulling, which I don't think works against a tough guy, especially in the heat of the battle, I'm compressing. Yeah, I had to let it go. The best news, guys, I have this underhook, so my second hand is not tied up. So if, if the guillotine should fail, I'm still on top. And as I'm sort of sprawling down, it allows me to focus on other submissions. Okay. How are we doing on time, Mike? What does this mean? We're done? Yeah. Guys, <laughs> again, this stuff keeps going fast. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, guys, share, like, subscribe. I don't even know what else to tell you. But invite your friends because I really love doing this. Guys, but I do hope that it's and at some point in the future, hopefully very soon, we'll all be on the mats together. See you tomorrow at 10.30 a.m.